So Irish author Sally Rooney is the latest high-profile entertainment figure to be blighted by an anti-Semitism row after she refused to translate her new book into Hebrew. The Normal People author said her decision was in support of the pro-Palestinian boycott, divestment and sanctions movement, but an Israeli minister denounced the decision as anti-Semitic. However, Rooney defended the decision by saying, I understand that not everyone will agree with my decision, but I simply do not feel it would be right for me under the present circumstances to accept a new contract with an Israeli company that does not publicly distance itself from apartheid and support the UN stipulated rights of the Palestinian people. Now, the BDS describes itself as a Palestinian-led movement urging action to pressure Israel to comply with international law through boycotts and sanctions. But Israel claims the group opposes the Jewish state's very existence. As Rod Liddell wrote in The Spectator, Rooney's last awful book was translated into 46 languages. Did that include Arabic, the language spoken by the Saudis, Kuwaitis and Emirates, a collection of slave states which deny their citizens the vote, along with all the normal access to human rights? Is it okay for her book to be translated into Burmese or even Russian? If so, why? What is the great difference with Israel? And Rod Little is here now. Rod, well, indeed, indeed. So more hypocrisy. Hi, Dan, how are you doing? Very well, thank you. Yeah. More, more hypocrisy uh, from these left-wing liberal lovies who despise Israel but turn a blind eye to other states doing far, far worse things when it comes to human rights. Well, exactly. And, and I should have mentioned in the Spectator piece uh, that the stupid woman had her last book, Normal People, which apparently some people liked, uh, translated into Chinese by a Chinese oh. publishing house, which uh, has close connections with the ruling Communist Party, <laughs> as does, I suppose, pretty much every area of business within that disgusting country. Uh, so uh, she had no tears to spare whatsoever for the plight of the Uyghurs, the Uyghur Muslims in uh, Western China, uh, who've been suffering genocide at the hands of the Chinese government for the last 10 years, and indeed very few countries are making much of a stand about that at all. I can't think why. Uh, instead, she singles out Israel. And the, 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 there are a load of things in here. I mean, firstly, the BDS movement, which is a movement I've always heartily despised. It is a movement which is uh, considered to be anti-Semitic by a number of world governments, including Germany, both of the main parties in America, um, I certainly consider it to be, to be anti-Semitic because it particularly pins guilt on Jews, not simply on Israel. And also, uh, as an organisation, it wishes the, uh, the, the ending of the Israeli state. It does not want a two-state solution uh, in the Middle East, as most of us would prefer. Uh, it instead wishes for Israel to lose entirely its Jewish heritage uh, and uh, simply to become uh, a secular state. Uh, it is an appalling organisation, and it's got its way uh, quite often by bullying uh, woolly little airheads like Sally Rooney. Well, the thing is, if you were an Israeli, uh, you would feel like Sally Rooney was turning on you by not being prepared to give you access uh, to her book. Well, exactly. Um, the, the other thing which always annoys me is the great irony of the BDS movement. And this is trumpeted by the Labour Party. It's trumpeted by the Liberal Democrats. Uh, they always say the same thing. They say that Israel is an apartheid state. It is one of the most horrible hypocrisies and fallacies of our time, given that apartheid was a system under which uh, the majority uh, black people of South Africa were not allowed to vote. Uh, whereas Israel is a state in which the minority Arab population isn't merely allowed to vote, which is something it does not have in any other Arab state in the Middle East. Only in Israel do Arabs have those rights. Uh, they also have positive discrimination uh, and representation in the Neset uh, and uh, sponsored uh, uh, academic uh, scholarships and so on. So it, it is an appalling accusation to make. And of course, as always with this question of, is this simply anti-Israeli or anti-Semitic? Why is it Israel they always pick on? There are so many other countries doing far, far worse things than picking on a secular democracy which allows its people a free vote.
Well, no, of course, Rod. And this is a really disturbing trend. And actually, we see it from corporates now as well, don't we, uh, who are prepared to, for example, change their logo into the pride flag. Let's, let's, take, take, that, uh, that, let's take that old chestnut. And uh, they'll use that logo in every Western country around the world, but certainly not in the Middle Eastern states, where having a same-sex relationship would see you thrown into prison, or worse. And it's the hypocrisy that drives me mad. Either keep out of politics yeah. altogether or be consistent. Yeah, no, it, it, it is hypocrisy. It's also just sort of, it's an over-familiar term and we use it too often maybe, but it is just corporate virtue signalling. Uh, I was in Sainsbury's this afternoon uh, and I went up to the counter to buy my stuff and pay, my, pay for my stuff and there were 10 posters hanging down saying Sainsbury's, se <coughs> Sainsbury's is celebrating Black History Month. How is it? What's it doing? You know, what possible connection with Black History Month does Sainsbury's have? What is it trying to tell us? What it's trying to tell us is that it's right on. You know, that's all it's trying to tell us. It is shallow virtue signaling. And I suspect it's the same of Sally Rooney. I suspect she's not herself anti-Semitic. It's just virtue signaling. Yeah, although you do say in, in your column, Rod, that anti-Semitism is rife amongst our upper classes in Britain. Well, yeah, it certainly was, and it was certainly right amongst the Foreign Office, which was always famously Arabist. It is always, it is, it is a lot, lot more rife uh, amongst the ruling classes in Ireland, where Sally Rooney comes from. Uh, there is a deep strain of anti-Semitism stretching right back to the 1930s in, in Irish society, and I think uh, Sally Rooney might have been better off uh, uh, investigating that particular phenomenon and perhaps trying to uh, change the mind of a few Irish people that uh, uh, anti-Semitism really isn't a very desirable trait. I'm going to bring my panel in on this now. Tonight, it is the Daily Mail columnist Amanda Platel, uh, the co-founder of Conservatives Against Racism for Equality, Albi Amancona, and the broadcaster and journalist Daisy McAndrew. Da Daisy, where do you stand on this Sally Rooney debacle? Well, if I were Sally Rooney, would I have taken the stand she's taken? No, I don't think I would have. But I do think that Sally Rooney's books are Sally Rooney's intellectual property, and she has every right to decide where she wants to market it or where she wants to sell it. She's only really damn it, cutting off her nose to spite her face in a way because she's not going to sell any books in a certain territory. But I think she has the right to take the view that she's taken. I don't agree with it but I think she's allowed to do it. Rod? Yeah, I agree. She's got the right to do whatever she wants. Uh, my, my contention is simply that she's a moron for doing it. Uh, <laughs> it's, 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 as, it's as simple as that. A moron who could, further down the line, be accused of anti-Semitism because mm. it always comes back to that same thing as to why you are picking on Israel. And when you discover, as I, as I mentioned, you know, that her previous book, uh, was published by an arm of the Communist Party in China. You really do have to say, but it's Israel that's got your goat, is it, Sally? OK, love, OK. But it is Israel that's got her goat. And if you go down that line and say, well, you know, she didn't stand with the, you know, the Ouija's in China, um, you know, she shouldn't be selling in Burma, I do think that that's slightly the wrong argument because she's allowed to pick the no. fight she wants to pick. And she's, it's not incumbent on her to make a, a, a ruling on every territory or every country in the world, because you can make an argument for almost anywhere that you shouldn't sell into that country. No, 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 indeed. No, 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 indeed, Daisy. I, I, I totally agree with you. It is entirely her right to be seen as someone entirely lacking in sentience. Uh, and that's what she's managed to do to me. <laughs> so, you know, if, if I ever had the... Uh, half thought of reading one of her ghastly books. So this has put me off it completely. So hopefully that will have... Although I dare say the publicity has actually helped her book. Yeah, well, exactly, because I hadn't even heard about it. Albi Amancona? My thoughts on this, running an anti-racist organisation, I'm against all forms of racism, and anti-Semitism is racism. And I think if this was another religion, we'd be having a completely different conversation. But she yeah. has somehow decided that all speakers of Hebrew are pro problematic, and I find that problematic. But I wonder, you know, she's published the book in English, obviously, as a first language. Is she still selling the book in Israel in, in English? 
where probably most people speak English as a second or first language. So in that sense, I do think it's quite virtue signaling. Yeah, I think I, I think I agree entirely with Albie on that. Um, I, I, it, it, it is it is iniquitous, firstly to single out Israel, but also as BDS do to single out Jews in Israel. Uh, you know, and they are very very clear about that, and they're also very clear about not wishing there to be a Jewish state anymore. So I, I think if if you actually read about BDS, it's very difficult to come away without believing, as so many governments do, that it is actually a racist institution. Amanda Platel. Hi, Rod. And my Hi, Amanda. Amanda. Hi. I'm afraid I've got a lot of the point. <laughs> Sorry, I can't hear you properly. Sorry. I, I, was, I was just asking after your well-being, uh, darling, that's all. I, I'm doing really being... well, thank you, and delighted to be here with you. Um, I'm afraid I'm going to lower the tone a bit, Rod. Um, I watched normal TV on normal people on TV. I didn't read the book. Um, I thought it was great. Lots of really good sex. Um, <laughs> oh, there was. Oh, there was. <laughs> really good sex. Tastefully done. But you know, the, all it did for me was reading uh, reading her um, about her comments because I thought I'm never going to buy that Pratt's book. I'm never going to buy any of her books again. But you know, you feel that you're silenced into saying that because she's virtue signalling. Well, I'm going to say it. Um, whatever your name is, Sally Rooney. Despite how good the sex is, I'm never going to buy one of your books. That's exactly yeah. how I felt as well. I mean, I'm sure she will uh, get the woke-topian crowd behind her, but she already had that crowd behind her. But, Rod, I, 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 think, I think there'll be a backlash, and it may not be a backlash that happens much in the media for obvious reasons, but I, I think there will be a backlash against her commercially. Well, I, I, I would hope there is, but the trouble is BDS does have an ability to do a good spot of bullying. Um, less so, I have to say, I mean, obviously amongst universities where, where the, the horrible uh, suggestion, which is that we should never have any contact with any Israeli academics, any Jewish academics, in effect. But also further down the chain when it comes to pop music, because uh, it has run a very successful campaign uh, persuading airheaded pop stars who think that Israel is probably just to the southeast of Leeds uh, and have absolutely no comprehension of, of what, the, what the realities are, not to play there, not to have their records released there. And it's only because of the bravery and outspokenness of, of performers such as Nick Cave um, that, that this is, matter has been brought to light and he said, no, I will play in Israel. You know, uh, and, and so BDS does have its fingers in a lot of pies and it has been very successful. Yep, no, you're right. And I think that's why we need to keep talking about them and call out the hypocrisy of the artists, the authors, uh, the entertainers like Sally Rooney, who will take action against Israel. But as Rod points out, not China. And that says it all. Rod Little, thank you so much. We'll speak again. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favourite shows and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.